Hi guys, welcome back. My name's Rochelle. I like to build stuff, you know. So Kelsey has a really sweet surprise office makeover planned for Elliot while he's out of town. I really like Elliot. I think he and I have bonded over the last year, so I am beyond excited that I get to give a helping hand for this makeover. So Kelsey asked if I would be interested in trying my hand at constructing a custom corner desk for the space. Well, first I was like, you're absolutely nuts if you think I've got the skills for that. Then it was a little more like, well, maybe I could do it. I mean, it would definitely be a fun challenge, that's for sure. And then finally I was like, heck yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much for believing in me. I'm on it. No, no. You might change your mind a dozen times about how you're gonna approach this. It's a desk. It's a desk. I got freckles. I always wanted freckles. Let's do this. So Kelsey and I actually had a brief discussion about what she was thinking for this desk and we went in there the other day and took some sneaky measurements while he was out. So I've got a general idea, but I do have some things I wanna talk through in detail with her and something I need to actually grab from her in order to get started on these plans. So I'm gonna go find Kelsey and we're gonna get to work on this desk. Kelsey sourced these gorgeous vintage hand turn legs that I can't really use as is, but we'll get to that later. She and I talked in depth on what her vision was for the desk and what features were needed so it could be the most efficient for Elliot's workflow and for the space itself. So here's the basic plan, a triangular shaped desktop for Elliot's keyboard and mouse. Then we wanna add a second tier to prop up his monitor and laptop. I'm gonna add those turned legs at the front with an apron the whole way around for support. You got this, you got this. I hope I got this. <laughs> Also, do we have a plan B if, uh, if the legs go haywire? Okay, so now that I've got a pretty solid plan on how to approach this desk, and I've got the legs from Kelsey in my hand, I think I'm actually gonna go home to get started on this project. Don't get me wrong, I love the office and I love the office tools, but they're not my tools, you know? I love my tools. And my mom has very generously given me the space and the freedom in our basement to create a workshop of my own. So I think that's the perfect space to work on this project. So I haven't ever created a piece of furniture quite like this, so it's gonna be a bit of a journey at times to figure out what to do next and how this is all gonna to come together in the end. So Kelsey found these beautiful vintage turned legs that we want to put on the front of the desk to give it some character. Problem is, based on the height that we need, these legs are actually a little bit too short. So my first challenge is gonna to be to figure out how to splice together these legs so that we get them to be the height that we need. Basically, I wanna use most of the bottom part of two of the legs, and I wanna cut the top off of the other two legs and add it onto this leg to make it longer. I'm, I'm gonna take you along on the journey with me so we can see how it goes, but um, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was terrifying, but uh, we've got the tops off of two of our legs. And I think the next step I actually wanna take is to add these little cushioned glides, which also double as leveling feet. So these legs come with a little plastic threaded insert. So all you have to do is drill the appropriate size hole in the bottom of the foot, and you need to drill the hole a half inch down. So I've just added a little bit of masking tape to act as a flag so I don't drill too deep. Because it's threaded, it can actually move in and out a little bit, which I think will come in handy when we're dealing potentially with uneven floors or uneven cuts. So my original thought was to use these wooden dowels that I brought from work, but now I'm thinking, since I see the inside of this, that I will use a three quarter inch dowel that I just have at home and maybe do one fat dowel instead of a couple smaller ones. So now I'm just gonna take a three quarter inch Forstner bit, but you could use a spade bit as well. And I'm going to drill a hole into the center of these legs. Oh Good. I have to tape off three quarters. So ordinarily, to help align your dowels, you could use something called a dowel center. If you've already got a dowel in your material, these have a hollow back, 
So you can put this on the dowel and then when you line up your other piece and sort of hammer on it, you get a little mark in the other piece that helps you align them. So even my largest dowel center is not gonna be anywhere near big enough. So what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of lipstick because it's got an oily consistency to it so it's not gonna dry out before I get a chance to align my two pieces. So basically all I wanna do is put some lipstick all over the end of my dowel. And this is a lipstick I keep in my toolbox. This does not go back on these lips. I'm not even really a, a red lipstick kind of gal, you know? So then when you put your dowel in the hole and you go to line up the two pieces, you're gonna get a circle of lipstick on this piece that will tell you exactly where to drill. So I grabbed a couple of my pipe clamps, which are actually a fairly affordable way to get really big clamps in your workspace. So basically they sell these two ends as a kit and then you buy a piece of galvanized or black iron pipe to span the distance. So I just happened to get a 36 inch pipe. And so that gives me at least, I think 32 inches of clamping space. And obviously the pipe comes in shorter or longer pieces. And in some hardware stores, you can actually have it cut to size. And I've never done a glue up like this before. So I'm just gonna turn the camera on to film and see what happens. Oh, and this right here is called a call. So it's actually just a board with some packing tape on it so that the glue doesn't stick to it. I also use smaller versions of a call to help apply pressure on the top and bottom when I'm gluing together panels. This is gonna get messy. So I got glue on my shirt. That's why we cannot have nice things. Now, how can I do this with only two hands? <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> no. Oh, I hate this. Are we doing it or are we doing it? All right, so while these dry, let's go get some plywood. It's important to plan out what supplies you need and how you're gonna get them home. I know that the 48 inch width of a piece of plywood is just a couple of inches too wide to fit in the back of my car. I learned that the hard way. So I made sure to do a mock-up of how I would cut my pieces out of the plywood sheet. So when I had them cut it down at the store, I would be able to get the largest pieces for our desk out of the pieces that would still fit in my car. It's like laying out your pattern pieces on fabric to make the most out of your material. All right, I'm back from the store and I picked up a sheet of the nicest looking plywood that they had at the store, which ended up being three quarter inch thick maple plywood. I think that once we get the desk constructed and stained, it's gonna look really, really nice in the space. As it is a corner desk, and it's essentially in the shape of a triangle, you may have noticed that we only glued up two turned legs. So I think this desk is actually gonna need a third leg at the back. So I think I'm gonna take just some two by four material cut it down to roughly the length of a leg, glue it up, and I think we can cut it into just some sort of blank that may actually end up getting concealed in the final desk anyways. Okay, so you may notice that I actually had them cut this piece at the store to basically the dimensions I need for this. So all I need to do is trace out that diagonal line and this little notch for the electrical cords, and then I will trace the monitor stand template onto our other piece of maple plywood. I'm not gonna lie, gluing up these turned legs took way longer than I thought it would. So I definitely didn't get as much accomplished today as I had hoped. It's actually getting to be a little bit late in the evening and I don't want a shitty neighbor. So I think I'm actually gonna save the power tool use until tomorrow morning, give this leg a chance to dry overnight and I will see you guys back here tomorrow morning. All right, good morning. We are back. We are fresh. We are ready to cut some wood. So first things first, I think I want to cut this leg down so it's a similar size to the top of these ones, just so that I'm kind of working with the same thing. So I'm going to take this over to the table saw, get it cleaned up. Let's get into it. Ok, 
Okay, so now that I've got my two decorative legs and my one support leg measured up, we're gonna cut them down to size so we can start working on getting them attached to our desktop. Okay, I'm so glad I spared you all of this figuring out because this has taken a while. There are some angles involved and I am very, very poor at angles. So I've been trying to just practically line the pieces up as I go. The reason I am doing this apron on this desktop is because Kelsey and Elliot live in an older Toronto home. And if there's anything you know about older Toronto homes, there are tiny hallways and tight stairways. So I thought the best course of action would be to build this desk with removable legs. So what I think I wanna do, cause I have this one piece left to cut, is actually go ahead and add some pocket holes to all of these little pieces. Okay, so because the plywood that we're using is three quarters of an inch thick, we are gonna set our stop collar here on our drill bit to three quarters of an inch. And we're also gonna set our material thickness to three quarters of an inch as well. You wanna make sure you're thinking through all of your fasteners and what you're gonna do a couple steps ahead. So I know for in this piece, I wanna do two pocket holes that are going to attach this piece to the desktop. But I also wanna do a couple of holes into here that's gonna attach these two pieces. And I need to be cognizant of the fact that I'm gonna have two bolts coming out of the leg through here. So before I glue anything up or screw anything, I wanna plan out where all of those will go and drill the appropriate holes. Okay, so now that I've got the apron secured to the desktop, I'm gonna try and show you how to attach these removable legs. Now, granted, if you're just making a regular table or a desk or something like that, you're probably gonna follow more along the lines of this because this is going in at a right angle. The other ones have been, let's call it creative woodworking to hopefully get them to attach to the table in a similar fashion. So what we're gonna use to attach these turn legs is a hanger bolt, which has a coarse thread with a screw end on one end and a finer thread and a machine screw or bolt end on the other. So in order to get the hanger bolt into the hole, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take one of the nuts and thread it onto the finely threaded side. Then we're going to thread on a second nut and take another wrench and tighten them really tight against each other. And we can use a socket and we are going to attach that to our impact drive. Okay, so then this diagonal piece goes across here. But do you see what I mean about planning out where your fasteners go? Because where these two need to connect to this piece, I've got pocket holes. That's gonna make it a little more difficult. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do here. We are gonna add a second block and then hopefully we'll be able to drill, we'll be able to screw this one in over here. Add the last leg to the table, I'm also gonna use two hanger bolts. But as you can see, the bolt is not long enough to come out of a double thickness bracket like this. So we're actually going to drill a little bit of a hole that's going to allow our washers to sit inside the wood. Okay, this is a real moment of truth. I'm gonna try and flip it over and we'll see if it stands up like a desk should. That's really all we need at this point. Oh, real slim shady to stand up. It's a, it's a desk. It's a desk. It's a desk. Um, oh my God, the desk is standing. That is incredible. That is more than I think I actually hoped for. That is fantastic news. I think now what we wanna do is get to work on making the monitor stand. So I need to add some supports to that so that it's raised up from the desktop. We got a lot to do. 
let's keep pushing through. I'm using more of the maple plywood, cutting two longer pieces for the back side of the monitor stand and two smaller pieces, which will go on the short sides of the monitor stand. These feed squares are invaluable and they're pretty inexpensive. I would definitely at the very least keep this little seven inch one on hand. Grab another size if you can, but I love these tools. Could not live without them. Clamps will definitely be your best friend when installing pocket screws in a situation like this. You simply can't line it up, hold it down with enough pressure to get a good solid joint between the screw and the plywood. So again, if you've got clamps, use them. Also, when screwing in pocket holes, make sure that you turn your speed on your drill down and turn your torque pretty low. So that way you're not gonna push your screw too far into the wood, especially if you're using softwoods. That is basically how we intended it to look with these plywood support pieces under the monitor stand holding it up. But my mom actually had kind of a cool idea because she said, you know, you've got these leftover spindly legs that you cut off. What if instead of putting this piece here, you just use this to support it? And then that way it mimics the legs down there. I thought that was kind of brilliant. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these down and attach them in such a way that they are removable if she doesn't like it. Okay, so in order to attach these little spindles in a removable fashion, I think I'm gonna use these threaded inserts because when you're doing things that are removable, if you just do a screw into the wood, if you screw and unscrew that a couple of times, eventually you're gonna strip out the hole. The material in the hole, the wood, is not gonna be strong enough to hold onto your screw. So that's why you get screws that are popping out of the wood. So in order to prevent that, we can use a threaded insert that is not only screwed into the wood, but I think we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive as well. And then that way, this is gonna stay nice and strong no matter how many times you screw and unscrew. And in order to really secure this threaded insert, I'm gonna use this two-part epoxy. Now I'm using a two-part epoxy because I find that that works best on the connection between metal and wood. Probably should be using gloves, but we're in it now, aren't we? So we're gonna go ahead and pop that in the hole. On the decorative support leg for the monitor stand, I'm gonna add a hanger bolt, which will screw into a threaded insert that I put on the underside of that stand. Okay, so Kelsey wanted um, a plywood panel to go at the back to just kind of disguise the fact that this is like one whole separate looking leg and also because um, that way we can hide some of the cords that are gonna come down and make it look a lot cleaner. What I'm thinking is we just need a panel to kind of run from here to here. So I think I'm gonna cut it much like this one is with the 45 degree angles and just have it like butt up and be supported by the two apron pieces and then just kind of come down. Okay, I think that might actually be it for the construction of this desk. Legs are on, back panel on, the monitor sand is looking great. Yeah, so I wanna take everything off so that we can give this a light sand now you wanna be careful with plywood because the top veneer can be very, very thin. So we are only gonna get this the lightest of sands just to make sure we lose all of the splinters because we don't wanna sand through the veneer down into the next layer, which is not gonna look pretty. So I did pick up a brand new roll of edge banding, which is veneer that's got an adhesive on the back that is heat activated. So you use an iron to iron this edge banding on. So the stuff is pretty easy to work with. You literally just iron it on. Then once it's all on and had a chance to cool down and set, then you can take a razor blade and just trim off the excess. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to get this all done, but I do think it's so, so worth it for this finished look that it gives our desk. Okay, one of the last steps. We are going to take this paint and varnish stripper that we had at the office and coat these bad boys and hope some of this shiny varnish comes off so that we can give it a little bit of a stain tomorrow in office. Hey guys, Kelsey here. You have obviously seen Rochelle build this desk. 
but I just saw it for the first time. And my mouth, it's open. Like Elliot is such a lucky guy to have this beautiful custom made desk. Rochelle did an amazing job. I love all the details. And I know I asked a lot of her, like lots of weird specifications. Thank you, Rochelle. You did such an amazing job. I appreciate you for putting up with my specificities when it comes to designing pieces like this. So basically, now all that's left to do is pick a stain. We have some options here. And then I think Rochelle's gonna put on the stain. Can't wait to see it in the space. Okay, so after some extensive testing with the stain, we have decided to try the red mahogany stain, which really goes well with the reddish tone that the legs already have naturally. Oh my God. Okay, so this is your PSA to definitely wear gloves and also wear clothes you're not that precious about when you're staining because like, look at that. I got freckles. I always wanted freckles. Then once everything's dry, we can put a clear coat on top and then our desk is done. I'm so happy. If you're ever top coating big flat pieces of wood, pick yourself up one of these sponge applicators. They are fantastic. Okay, so now that we've got all of our desk pieces stained with a clear coat, looking fantastic, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to put the desk together. Okay, there we have it, a custom corner desk. I'm super pleased with that. I wasn't sure we were gonna get here in the end, but here we are. I think it looks amazing. I hope that Kelsey and Elliot like it. And if you wanna see this desk styled in place, make sure you check out Kelsey's office makeover video coming out this Tuesday. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. This is a very special episode because I get to make over my boyfriend Elliot's office. And surprise him with the whole thing. He has absolutely no idea this is happening and he's actually going out of town in 10 days, at which point I will have precisely two days to make over the entire space before he returns. Hi. Hi.